विपर्यासे तयोहोक्षिने तुरीयम् पदमश्नुते ड्यूरिंग द वेकिंग स्टेट एंड ड्यूरिंग सोपना और ड्रीम वी हैव wrong cognition of the reality. We forget the reality and something else is superimposed. Whereas in the state of nidra or sleep, there is no cognition at all. But when there is erroneous knowledge is taken away, suddenly when you, that is when you ask the question, who am I? What happens? That Turiya is realized. We touch that. And we have to be there. So this is from Mandukya Karika. Very. Thank you, Nila Kantanji. And this is a, such a subtle point, but if you take this point, it can help you to completely establish in self. You can put it in so many different ways. The same thing. I'll give you an example. Words best mathematicians. Physicist, when they reach their ripe age, they lose their marbles. Not that they become demented, but the processing of the mind is not that fast enough. And sometimes they think they should be best at their peak, but the peak goes away. Same is in a lot of sports. Peak is in between 20 to 30 and by the time they are in mid 30s, they are out out of game. So, if you identify yourself with whatever relative knowledge you have gathered from this word and that is your identity, then definitely you will be miserable one day because whatever you have gained will be lost in some way or the other. Position, money, knowledge, whatever abilities you have learned. And because our identification is with the body and whatever the mind has gathered, that in itself is a trap. If you understand this trap, you can be free at this moment. Just understand that when you are dreaming, you think it is real. And you have thoughts at that moment and you're planning and you're doing and looks like it all real. That dream finishes and this dream starts, the waking dream. And the thoughts are there. And then objects and beings and people and to you, it appears as if you are thinking and you are acting on these thoughts and you have to sort out these thoughts. Otherwise, it is like you are in this cage of mind. You cannot even perceive what you are in that mind. Only way is to slowly getting detached from this mind and getting attached to that self which is only awareness and this process can be gradual or can be instant. Nobody can say about any person how this will manifest. I'll give you a very beautiful example which can help you a lot to establish yourself. Let's say you meet up any being at work in a gathering or wherever employer, employee, colleague, whatever situation. 
if you meet someone as fresh as possible fresh means without any preconceived ideas in the mind that means you are getting established as yeah. that self because i without any baggage i'll tell you correct what, without any baggage yes yes so what happens i'll tell you when you see someone where which country they come from or what religion or what background or what profession mind actually analyzes and gives you judgment about a person if you can free from that judgment all the time being vigilant and not getting trapped about any judgment of or any person at any time you are getting out of the mind i'll give you second level of clue let's say you have some argument or some issue with some person whether it's a family member or a colleague if you catch up with that person after 2 hours or 3 hours and again you can meet them as nothing has ever happened like there is no memory your memory is wiped off you are clean slate and you meet again fresh welcoming with love with unconditioned love that means you have gained over mind because this is you need to understand this is your mind is at stake problem is all in the mind because mind is conditioned entity your mind is your cage if you can be free from this cage you are always happy always blissful always because that is our innate nature if it is not colored with mind this is a very simple technique to practice because all of us are not living in a cave we live among people in family with friends at job and we come across people and when you come across anyone stranger or new you have to be very vigilant and see whether your mind pulls out and paints a picture about a person or whether it just stays neutral you know it is not about human beings we come across people paint picture of animals of plants even food i hate this food or i don't like this or i don't like this tree i don't like this color i don't like this pet i don't like people who keep pet you know that can be complete nonsense like this is the way the mind works it categorizes it likes it dislikes it judges it criticizes it analyzes and you think that is beautiful that is crap that is cage understand this truth if you can meet everything as as you as it is not what your mind is coloring things then you are free so look if you understand and if you can live like that nothing else needs to be done you are already free but i know because of so much of baggage of mind it takes time coming and going and staying in that impartial state but if you start practicing like this where no judgment i'm not talking about what you speak to people and that is you are you are in that means you are in pit if you behave nonsensely i'm talking about when a first thought comes in mind even when you don't speak how you how when someone comes in your vision how it happens what it happens so try to be in that state where even if a thought comes you completely ignore and the best way to ignore all thoughts when you come across a being is to just watch them but don't give your energy to those thoughts this happens even before you talk to anyone even before you say hello to someone 
because that's the way the mind start perceiving another way to analyze is when you go in a gathering you your eyes looks around and you want to talk to someone and want to avoid someone and see this is what the mind is doing the moment is start selecting something and and avoiding something it is perfect ego mode see how it works it uh, it the moment in a gathering you put your hand across a person and you say he's my closest friend and he's my buddy and you are making all the other people in the party as your enemies immediately without knowing without saying anything else without saying that they are enemies this is what this is this is what attachments and this is the way mind and ego works it, it segregates everyone that is the bondage of mind it cannot stay neutral that is not its quality it is made up of thoughts and thoughts only know how to divide there is no unity in mind it it creates multiplicity so try not to use your mind in interactions just be open it's not about strangers it's also about the people you come across every day someone has said something and people hold grudges for years so nothing should stick to you nothing sticks to self it only sticks to ego which thinks i am this body mind this is very simple technique you can practice it all the time and i'll tell you the best worship of god is to stay as self you can't be better devotee of god than staying in that impartial neutral state practice with human beings practice with things practice with animals you will realize there's nothing to say you become quiet you can be very talkative maybe that talkativeness can go into talking about god or brahman but all that gossip will go away because all the time mind just gossips about things and beings internally and outwardly which we call as gossiping it is all garbage stop giving work to the mind this is the work which we give all the time there is still utility of mind don't take me otherwise if you are building a house you have to buy some tiles some color match you have to think this matches this and this that's okay but the constant discrimination judgment and analysis which happens especially with beings because beings also have ego and it reflects it you can't hide you can <laughs> show a loving face and hug but if you are feeling hate for someone he will know it because the mind is acting and mind and that ego that energy whatever you try to do a makeup on it it just shows but if you internally you are completely open to all beings then you don't even bother what they think about you whether they like you or dislike you then your default mode is always liking you know in bhagwan's days people living around bhagwan used to make joke of him that he never finds fault in anyone and sometimes they used to pick up discussion about someone who was notoriously bad person in the town 
and Bhagwan will stay still find some good quality of that person and will say, oh, no, no, he is hard working or look how muscular he is or whatever. So the thing is that that energy cannot call anything bad because it's the same energy in everyone. Outwardly, people can look different. And when we judge and when we criticize people, it is our own projection on others. Actually, this mind is beautiful thing. It shows what is inside outwardly in form of beings and things and situations. Actually, external situation shows what we are. When we hate that situation, when we dislike the situation, when the situation is really bad, it is our own creation. In so many ways, you can prove it is your own creation. Definitely from your prarad karmas, what you sow, you reap. But otherwise also, right now, the way you think, it creates that atmosphere. So if you give away this gadget completely and just meet everyone with an open heart, in that impartial state, it's a different energy. You don't even have to say any word to someone. You just go and you sit or you just, your eyes meet and there is only love. And somehow other person, spiritual or not, doesn't matter. But that person also has a self, whether he knows it or not, or he's, he's inquired into or not. The moment that pure self comes even close to an egoistic mind, the self which is there witnessing talks and that person also feels so much peace and and that person's ego also subsides at that moment and he feels peace and bliss on talking or without talking or just in pure presence so many people realize peace first time when they attend satsang or they meet a Mahatma because there is nothing else. He is not asking anything from you. He is not doing it for money. Spirituality is, is not a business for a sage. It can never be. If he has to earn, he will do something or he will become a beggar. And sage has nothing to do a propaganda of anything. There's nothing, nothing to do. If things will happen because he has given all the burden to that pure awareness. If it has to decide, it will bring people, bring people will spread the message or whatever has to happen. No one doesn't matter. Nothing on his shoulder. That's why he is in bliss. This is so easy if you understand. Only your understanding is needed. Understanding from your heart, not from your intellect or mind. Because these are the tools you have to give some peace. Overutilized, abused and misused. Give more silence. more importance to silence. And the best way is when you're not giving any work to the mind, everything becomes silent. You move in silence, you work in silence, you meet people in silence. When I say silence, actually you should replace silence from love divine love. You meet every, everything becomes divine love because that energy then flows. 
it can only flow in silence. When thoughts have no role to play in your life, thoughts have role to play till you have ego. Ego gone. Ego is this only, the one who is giving tasks to mind, who is judging, analyzing, criticizing, liking, disliking. You stop doing all these things and you just welcome whatever comes. Give away this excessive planning. Accept this moment as it is. Let's say you planned some friends to visit your home and someone else enters from the back door who was visiting and you think, oh, he's a spoiled or, you know, this is the way it was supposed to be. Greet him. When you have your preconceived ideas how the day goes and if it doesn't go that way, it causes suffering. All suffering is self-inflicted because we have a desire that this is the way things should happen. We have arranged there's no problem in arranging, but don't be attached to those arrangements. If someone else comes and changes the arrangement, don't get annoyed. Just accept it. See divinity in every act. See how God is playing in everyone, how he has already arranged. You are thinking that you are arranging, he is arranging. This is the problem. Here is the conflict. You think I am doing, I have done this way, I want this way. But everything is already arranged for you. When God's divine plan and your egoistic plan matches, then you are happy. When they are opposite, then you are unhappy. That is the whole game of life. You think that God has to take your permission. How insulting it is, isn't it? So many people, what they want and if they don't get, they said, I have lost faith in God. As, is, as if God is their servant and he has to obey their intentions and desires because they are the purest of pure. They have done all the good deeds in life and God should just do what they want. So have they surrendered to God? Are they devotee of God? Do they understand from where they speak? Do they know whom they are supporting? They are supporting the devil within us. And it gets bigger and bigger by that. That is why suffering brings us more closer to God because we become more humble, more humility dawns on us and we know that we are helpless. So <laughs> we surrender to that power because now we know that we have no power. That is why more successful people are more egoistic. While the scriptures say the opposite, they say that a tree which is full of fruits should bend down, should be more humble. But that happens when success comes with wisdom. And wisdom is to abide in the desirelessness. Though you are getting things because you are working hard or whatever, but still, if you practice desireless. Even in that abundance, you will get 10 times more, though you have no desire. But the good thing is you will not be proud of getting and if you lose, then there is no unhappiness. People think spirituality or religion or whatever it is, is so much different from daily living. It is not practical. Actually, spirituality is practical only. It's the way of life, how to live.
Acharya tells first word you have told in a very nice, it's a nice simile. He says that uh, if you consider all ornaments as made out of gold, you will always see ornaments and gold together. So there you have to try to see only the gold and not the ornaments. So you just see the gold and not the ornament. So like that, not personalities, but the existence principle itself, you see only that. Mm, very good. Hmm. One thing I would say in this case is that in initial days when you are trying to avoid it is much easier when you meet someone one to one but if you meet a lot of people with a lot of that type of energy in which um, it can pull you into ego it is best to avoid so with that grace when someone is into it vairagya dispassion actually comes people are not interested in meeting others so if you see in the scriptures, they talk about these qualities like there should be discrimination, there should be varagya, detachment. But it comes, it comes with that grace when you are in that energy. It somehow chooses you where to be or not to be without even you are thinking about it. And sometimes it even moves things away from you which are not conducive to your realization. Though you might think that you have this loss, maybe the mind might come and say, look, you lost this job or a friend or whatever it was, which you were attached, but maybe it was good. It brought you into more of this detached. So we, we need to understand this detachment. People call it detachment. I call it attachment. You are attached to self. So the detachment is no detachment because that is all fake attachment which the ego projects as attached to things. The moment you start realizing this purity in you, you don't want to go back into that. And just mere intellectual understanding of any statement is useless, I'll tell you honestly. Everyone knows that don't lie Lie is a sin, don't steal, steal is a sin. Every religion says the same and everyone does the same. They know it but they do it. Why? Because till you keep your ego alive, these rules are useless. Ego knows how to go around things, how to break these rules. Because it only thinks about itself. Stay in that pure state where you are not taking help of the mind. Couple of people have asked me that we don't understand what witness is. Thing for some people, it is a big task. What I'm talking about, but then tell me in life what is easy. Getting an Olympic medal is easy, or winning a Grand Slam is easy, or World Cup title is easy. Or, or whatever. But if, if we practice this, one thing is certain that you will be in peace. Other things I can't say, even get after getting a Nobel Prize, you will be in peace or in pieces. But here at least you will be in peace. 
and and this is beautiful i'll tell you even if you add some spice to it with your devotion with some bhajans with some prayers you know i'm not asking you to be just dry and and who says that a person on gyan marga can't have bhakti in it or you know some other japa in it or whatever doesn't matter everything comes to the same comes to that nothingness only only ego thinks it is something ego thinks i have accomplished i am doing and this ego wants also to know god which can never happen ego has to go and the best way is to stay where you are using your mind like you know minimalist hardly using mind behaving like dumb like someone should say to you bloody this was the person who deceived you or insulted you and you are hugging him or she what are you doing be at that level where people think you are just stupid stay in that stupidity that is bliss i'll give you an example beautiful example there there was a saint in uh, tirunamala yogi ram surat kumar and and if you get an opportunity watch this um, video by ganesh anna from tirunamala you know from the same family of bhagwan bhagwan's brother and he said that yogi ram surat kumar asked him to visit two or three people in town and all those people hated yogi ram surat kumar they disliked him to the core and he went to their house and saying thank you you gave me 25 or 50 rupees i don't know whatever the amount was to travel to varanasi to meet his family and that man insulted him and said get out from my house and no he said i just came just to say thank you to you and ganesh anna said why do you go i knew that he will insult you he said no no he gave me the money he said then he said i returned it that money immediately <laughs> he said then, then then he said look i have to just say thank you to him you know this this is this shows humility this shows your humbleness your humility your love for other is not dependent how they treat you and that comes in that egoless state it is so beautiful you know all these stories of these sages also helps us to just tell the same thing that we should abide in that unconditional love because when the mind is not there you're not judging anything you're not have preconceived notion whatever others have done meet everyone as fresh in now in this moment <coughs> where as if your all memory is erased or it has no effect on you no effect some people have dementia you know and probably people think he might be in a very miserable situation but who knows when there is no memory how blissful you might be if i remember correct i went and met your gram skurat kumar with ganesh nanda in 1998 and at that time there was a very beautiful statement made by him 
I can see only my father everywhere, even in you. Mm. So he is in that state always. So there was really blissful means to everybody who was there were feeling the bliss. Because the very presence was so nice. Very true, very true. And, and I would say that these types of people are all over the world. In India, you go to villages, nooks and corners, you will find someone there, you know. It is so beautiful, so beautiful energy. And we all can be there, just our openness should be there to be that. Because there is no one in this world born without self. No one. So that means it's not that God has not entered your heart. <laughs> they all, it always goes together because illusion is because the source is there. Illusion itself is a proof that there is a source. That is what Bhagwan said even to the person who disregarded his teachings at the end that and then he repented that even if you go to hell, I will be there. Because he said, what I have done, I will go to hell. He said, but I will be there. Because self is always there. Desirelessness is is the, is the permanent state of that self. And the moment the desire comes or the activity in the brain comes and you get restless and the moment the desire is fulfilled, mind goes back resting in the self. Though momentary because the desires are unending. Again, another beautiful example Bhagwan gives about shade. A person full of desires is the one who is in shade and goes into the scorching sun and then gets burnt and then comes back again. If in desirelessness you get peace, then why would you desire? And still, the good thing is still whatever is in your karmic account, you will still get it. Let's say you work in a company where they are very honest and they will pay you the amount of work you have done so you don't have to keep writing in your diary. That's what this whole thing is. It's our ego which thinks that I'm mistreated. Just stay in that blissful state and enjoy this show of changing situations, changing things. Even in tragedy you feel peace because in tragedy you are not part of tragedy. You are outside it. And even in achievements you are not jumping because you are outside it. It's just change in the situation or the scene. Never take Bhagwan as separate from you. The best course of action is you are that Bhagwan. Bhagwan is in your heart as you. So in that way, if you can inculcate all his qualities in you, that is the best sadhana. Best devotion, best devotee. Not just putting a picture of Bhagwan and 
doing an aarti around it and then with that ego doing all the stupidity outside carry that bhagwan in your heart and and act from there speak from there live from there then you don't have to read the scriptures or look into how to do how to you are that the one who is asking how to has to go stop working from there but this can only happen when you are desireless if to know the self is among another 100 desires then you can't get it desire itself means that you are not happy with what god has given you they say in hindi dil mange more <laughs> there is no end to desires you can finish one and then another creeps and desirelessness doesn't mean you have to leave everything that also can be bondage that can also ego can say that i have left everything leave that ego only stop working from there and i'll tell you the one who uses the mind all the time is ego the one who is not using it is the self if you make a movie of two people real people one working from self and the other from ego and you start from start to finish you will see i will guarantee you that the one working from self will have more success even in the materialistic world though he is desireless but i am still and even let's say if they both have the same amount of materialistic fulfillment the one desireless will be always happy understand this truth and the one full of desires will be more like a share market graph up and down Thank you everyone. It is so good to be in everyone's company. It is such a blessed company, you know. Because whatever even is said is comes only when that energy is there otherwise cannot come. Because it's always consciousness which speaks only to consciousness. and then only it helps otherwise there is no way it can help so, thank you sanjay thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you thank you sanjay thank you